Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to make some Father's Day cards using some household items, namely tin foil and bleach. We're going to take a paper towel, fold it up, and put it in a tray and dump some bleach on it so you saturate the paper towel. That's going to make a bleach stamp pad, and we are going to use some stamps from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com, to make these cute cards. They find the coolest stamps all over the world and bring them back to us here in the United States. I want to make sure you know that bleach is very damaging to clothing, so make sure you wear your cruddy old clothes like I am when you're doing this technique. So all you're going to do is press your stamp into the bleach soaked paper towel and stamp onto some cardstock. Now different colors are going to give you different effects, but it's going to give you kind of a tone on tone batik look. So depending on the style of stamps you use, you're going to get completely different looks. Now I used all these gears and kind of schematic stamps from this stamp by Quetzalcraft, and I'll have this stuff linked down below so you can find them. Now you can already see that the first things that I stamped with the bleach are already starting to change the color of the cardstock. Now your cheaper cardstock is going to work better for this. So if you've been um, hanging on to some old cardstock that you didn't really love because it was kind of thin and lightweight and um, not the quality that you've come to enjoy now that you're a seasoned stamper, that's the stuff you want to use for this technique. Now we're using bleach. So um, bleach is not an acid. It's a base. So I don't know if this makes this not acid free when you're done, but I wouldn't count on this lasting years and years. Now I also thought it'd be cool to add some stenciling on this, but I've got to be honest, this technique did not work. Uh, when I put a lot of bleach in, it just smooshed under my stencil. And then when I did little bits, it really didn't do anything to affect the look of the paper. So I guess I wasn't getting enough bleach on there uh, through the stencil. So stenciling didn't work, unfortunately. I bet if you had like a little spritz bottle that might have worked because I remember doing like um, bleach dyeing on t-shirts with stencils and spray like spraying bleach on it. Um, but uh, anyway, the stenciling with a little cosmetic sponge did not work here, but I thought I'd show it anyway because I thought it was a neat idea. If you wanted to do stenciling, you could do stenciling with an acrylic paint on top and give it a whole other layer of colors. So that's another option for you. But um, yeah, did not work with the uh, with the cosmetic sponge at all. So unfortunately, that's all right. For a little extra texture all over the entire thing and a little extra pattern, I just used this big rubber stamp that's uh, a text one. I've had it forever. Uh, I love to add this over things. It gives it a really subtle look and that just, I really like the way this paper came out. Um, so mix and match your stamps, get a really nice tone on tone background. It's really hard to mess this up because you don't have a bunch of other inks. Now I did test this out on some other papers just to give you an idea of what it might look like. So, you know, experiment and see what you can come up with. Now we're going to do our focal image stamping and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And I'm stamping on some Nina white cardstock. And this is the Nina Classic Crest white cardstock. I order it online. It's different from the Nina cardstock that you can get at Target. It's just a little bit, um, it's got more of a, of a, like a tighter weave to it. It's just a, like a harder sized cardstock that works really well with your Copic markers or any other alcohol markers for blending. I don't care for this cardstock for water-based products, but for your alcohol-based markers, it works great. And you can use any alcohol-based markers for this. Now I'm leaving a little bit of space between my images here. I'm using the Kesselcraft Owls and I'm also using the Kesselcraft accessories that came out a few years ago uh, because they all work really well together. I thought it'd be fun to give these owls some ties, top hats, sunglasses, that sort of thing to make them a little bit more dapper and a little bit more fitting for a Father's Day card. And uh, as you can see, I'll just put a couple stamps on one and stamp them out and stamp them together. Now I left some space because I do intend on cutting these out with my scan and cut machine, which is an electric die, electronic die cutter that um, will scan in a page and cut out around your images pretty well. So I don't have dies for these stamps. I don't even think that these Quetzalcraft stamps have dies. Um, and if you're someone like me that has thousands and thousands of rubber stamps, it is much more affordable than buying dies for the stamp sets you have. Now I chose three colors of tan. I started in with my darker color. I blended out with a medium color and then I pulled the color out further with a little bit of a lighter color and then a colorless blender. So that's a really nice way to work on this cardstock because the cardstock has such nice sizing in it. It will allow things to stay wetter longer and give you that more time to blend. Now I'm starting off with my Blick Studio marker. I really recommend those markers because they have replaceable tips and they also have refills and they're much cheaper than the Copic Sketch, but quality wise, I would consider them identical. Uh, I just wish they came in more colors, but um, but they are definitely my, my favorite budget Copic Sketch duplication markers that you can find. There are markers that are cheaper per marker, but they don't have refills. Um, 
So if you want something that will last a long time and then you can fill it up with other colors with Copics, that's a great option. Now here I am using some of my Copic grays to do these hats. I didn't want them to be stark black, so I did a cool gray seven, cool gray five, cool gray three, and then blended it out with a cool gray one. And of course you can find cool grays and warm grays and all those colors in most uh, brands of markers. The, um, the Blick Studio markers do give their markers, uh, they do have some grays in their full set, which is, I, I splurged on that when they first came out. Um, very glad that I did. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I don't think I have quite as many grays in that line that I do with the Copic. So I just grabbed them. They were right in front of me. So it was just handy. And then I'm just using a lavender to add the details. I figured that lavender would work really nice with the kind of overall yellow tan tone of everything. And, um, once everything was all colored in the way I liked it, I put it on my Skin and Cut mat so I could run it through my Skin and Cut machine. I don't have any tutorials for the Skin and Cut because, um, quite frankly, uh, and I do tape my my paper down too because I find the Skin and Cut mats that come with the machine not to be very sticky. Uh, but I find if you want information on Skin and Cut, check out Julie Faith and Balzer. So the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to emboss some tinfoil. Now this is a colored tinfoil. You can find this around holiday time sometimes at the supermarket or just take regular heavy duty tinfoil and color it with alcohol inks or acrylic paint. You can do the same exact thing. Now you can press it onto a texture and get a really good design that way because um, it is such a soft metal. But um, what I ended up doing was actually I glue sticked it to a piece of cardstock and ran it through my die cutting machine just to have a little extra um, stability there. And now I'm sanding this with my uh, fine sandpaper to reveal the um, aluminum underneath. So any aluminum foil, color it with alcohol ink, same idea, or acrylic paint if you want more of a rustic, less, less reflective look, completely up to you. It's gonna give you that grungy texture that you want for these cards. So I cut my cardstock into quarters Actually, I cut it to four inches by five and a quarter inches so it would layer on a card base. And then I just put this strip of embossed tin foil that's backed with cardstock on top. I'm using my crocodile to punch holes in each corner so I can use some screw top brads. I found these at Michael's. I previously ordered them from Paper Wishes, I think, uh, or Hot Off the Press, whatever the name of that catalog is. Um, I find them, I always use these. I use them up and then I was so happy to find more. They're one of those wonderful embellishments that go so good on industrial, steampunk, or masculine cards, like a masculine Father's Day card. And I used Tim Holtz Gadget Gear die to cut these big gears. I thought that would be a nice kind of break up from the background to situate my focal point. I find that when you cluster your images together, it makes the card much more pleasing and it anchors things and it just gives it a more finished look. So that way, even though it's not a very complex card, everything looks cohesive and it looks fully embellished. So I just used a little banner die that I've had forever to um, cut out a bunch of banners and I stamped Happy Father's Day on it. And I kind of perched my little owl there on the little banner, gave him a top hat to make him extra fancy, and um, just pretty much, you know, embellished with a few little gears. You can use whatever you have. You can use stickers to embellish. Um, it's really, you know, I think right now when it's really difficult to get supplies delivered in due to the quarantine, it's nice to use what you have, um, make your older product feel new again. Um, Top Flight Stamps is shipping, so any of the supplies you get from them, you'll be able to get fairly quickly. And I do have a coupon code in the video description so that you can save some more money on your domestic orders. These little gears were from a, um, a jewelry package of years. I think I got pretty inexpensively at Michael's. Uh, and um, But you can find it probably any place that has jewelry supplies. And I'm just using my Tombow Mono Glue because that does work pretty well. It actually works better if you could put the glue on, let it dry, and then stick it down. But um, this works as well. And there you can see one of the finished cards. I'll show you the other ones as well. I also did some Miss You cards because I thought those would be really handy right now that we can't um, physically get together. It would be nice to send that in the mail. And I I think these owls are so cute and it's so fun just to kind of uh, dress them up and put them in different situations, just like all the other Quetzalcraft animals. I'll link to that stuff down below in the video description. Make sure you check out our sponsor, topflightstamps.com. Until next time, happy crafting!